broadcasting live from UITM Gempa News. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning Malaysia. It's a Friday day, October 18, 2019. This is Sabrina Akila serving you the hottest and the most leading news of the hour. Your news, our business. Our headline for today is about cross-sectional element of highway and drainage. Highways are originally built to connect city and towns. Since they are wide and have high speed limit, they decrease the travel time. The major cross-section element considered in the design of street and how we include the pavement, surface, cross loop, land width, shoulder, curb, sidewalk and driveways, and also median. Due consideration should be given to the motoring and non-motoring users in designing the cross-section. Highway cross-section consists of four basic elements. The first one is the paved road, which is traffic bearing lane. What is the paved road? The paved road is road pavement which are provided with any type of bituminous surface or cement concrete surfacing. The second one is the road margin. The road margin consists of shoulders, curbs, drainage channel and median. The third one is the traffic separation devices which are consists of traffic barriers, median barriers and crush cushions and the fourth one is the provision which are bikeways and sidewalk. There are two types of highway which are divided highway and undivided highway. For undivided highway consists of travel lane and shoulder while for divided highway consists of travel lane, shoulder and median. Next, our crew will be reporting in details about the cross section element in highway. Thank you Sabrina. I am Aina Mashita reporting from Persiaran Sri Alam. In highway, there is a major element of cross section which are reserve, shoulder, tra traffic lanes and also road median. Before that, there are two types of highway which are single carriageway road and also dual carriageway road. For traffic lanes, the width is very. It is between 10 till 13 feet. But it is usually used within 12 feet, which is 3.6 meter. The two-way rural road or two lane, the width usually used is 10 till 11 feet. For traffic volume low, the width of the lane is 9 feet. As you can see, this is a shoulder of highway cross-section. The function of shoulder in highway cross-section is as a stopping facilities for vehicles. Other than that, it acts for the lateral support for the pavement structure. The width of the shoulder must at least 10 feet to 12 feet as it is uh, suitable for high trucks and suitable for volume traffic and also the speeds. Next, the minimum of width of the shoulder is 6 to 8 feet may be used in highway construction. So this is the roadside barrier. What's the function of this roadside barrier? So the function is to protect the vehicles from crashing onto hazard alongside of the road. Where, where this road barrier need to be installed? So. It is, be, it is to be installed at the bridge end, near steep slope, at the drainage or culvert, and also near large signage or illumination poles. This is one of the road barrier. The road barrier is protecting the vehicle from crashing along the roadside. Right now, I'm standing right on the median. So what is median? 
median is a section of divided traffic highway that separate traffic moving on opposite direction. What is the function of median? So median provide recovery area, provide refresh for pedestrian, separate opposite traffic and also provide stopping areas. So median can be flush, reverse and also depressed. Usually the width of median is 2 feet to 80 feet. That's all. Your news is our business. Thank you. Thank you, Aina Mashita. Hello, I'm Shantira, reporters from UITM Gempak News. I will be continuing on the elements of highway cross-sections. As you can see, I'm walking on the sidewalk, which the sidewalk is a paved part for the pedestrian beside the road. It is particularly at areas adjacent to schools and transit stops. Next video shows how sidewalk is made. Then, this is the curbs. Curbs is used to line the pavement edges and the pedestrian walkways. It can be classified either multiple curbs or barrier curbs. Straight curb keeps vehicles from crossing over pedestrian walkways. It, uh, the normal height is 6 to 8 inches. While for the multiple curbs, it has a side dip on one face of the curb so that it can facilitate vehicles to drive over them easily. Next is street gutter. Street gutter is a depression runs parallel to the road. It is designed to collect rainwater that flows along the street, diverting into a storm drain. This video shows curb and gutter concrete pouring. Guardrail barrier is widely used for highway safety. It is fixed on the side of the road, especially on curves and slopes. There are several types of guardrails which are curve, W-beam, bolt on and drop in. This is the examples of the W-beam guardrails. Lastly, cross slopes or camber. Cross slopes or camber is used to provide a drainage gradient so that the water will run off to the surface to a drainage system such as street gutter or ditch. So, we always raise the middle portion of all highways with respect to the edges. This cross slope in transverse direction is known by camber. But, why must we provide? Actually, camber helps in rainwater drainage from road surface. Remember, water deforms the highways. That's all from me. I'm Shahira reporting for UITM Gempak News. Thank you. Thank you Shahira. Next, I will proceed to grades and slope. The grades are also called a slope, incline, gradient, are important components in landscape design, garden design, landscape architecture, engineering and aesthetics design factor. Grade usually expressed as a percentage. A larger number indicates higher or steeper degree of tilt. In other words, if the number of the percentage increase, the steeper the road. The maximum grades are based on the design speed and design vehicles. Usually, rolling and mountainous topography have higher grades compared to flat topography based on the type of the road. The higher design speed the lower the grid. It is because for the safety precaution which is to avoid the drivers from skid and accidents. This is the example of the steepest road in the world. We're in a, a national park, Snowdonia National Park. It's an area of outstanding natural beauty. Harlech Castle is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and we now have the steepest street in the world to add to this um, 
diadem of jewellery. The Guinness World Record leads for the pen leg as the steepest street in the world with a 37.45% grid. Next, I will pass to our crew, Aina Talib, which she will be reporting about drainage. Good morning viewers, Aina Talib here, reporting from Jalan Punang. It is reported that the road here has a severe problem with cracking and breakup. It is believed that the problem is caused by the bad drainage system. As we know, water is the most significant cause of damage for the road pavement. So, road improvement cannot be done yet if the drainage problem is not solved. Drainage should be provided in two ways, which is first is surface drainage and second is subsurface drainage. During rains, the rains water will flow on the surface and parts of it will infiltrate through the soil. So, by all means, the surface water should be drained first properly. There are several types of surface drainage. First is longitudinal side drains. This is an example of longitudinal side drains. Second is catch basin and inlet. Three major phases. Collection, conduction, and discharge. The most widely used component of the collection phase is a plastic catch basin. Plastic catch basins come in different sizes and shapes, from a 6 inch round speedy basin to a 24 inch square catch basin. Catch basins have a sump area beneath the pipe connection that catches any leaves or debris before they enter the drainage pipe and potentially clog the system. Next is subsurface drainage. Subsurface drainage should also be considered as to drain the water to avoid it from permitted through cracks and joints which will eventually affect the road performance. So, how do we actually do the subsurface drainage? It's by lowering the water table at least 1 to 1.2 below the subgrade. Second is by controlling the seepage flow by putting filter material into longitudinal side drains. And third is by controlling the capillary rise. This is the effect of poor drainage root cracking, soil erosion. Therefore, it is very important for us to have highway drainage because if you do not drain the water that you want it, the nature will drain it for you. That's all for today. I'm Aina reporting from UITM Dan Partners. Your news, our business. <laughs>